Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with an update from Google where that company is now pumping out 1.3 quadrillion tokens a month to serve their AI products. Now, you might remember back earlier this year when between May and July, we saw this massive inflection point where Google went from processing 480 trillion tokens in May all the way up to 980 trillion towards the end of July. That was monthly tokens, by the way. So about 104% growth in just a couple of months. My speculation was this was due in part to the expansion of actual deployment use cases, particularly around AI coding, that was just consuming a huge amount of additional tokens. But whatever was driving it, it's clear that usage of AI is going up, up, up. Now, Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis recognized that at this scale, the numbers are frankly getting a little bit difficult to comprehend. A quadrillion has 15 zeros in it. And to reframe that 1.3 quadrillion number, he says... That's 500 million tokens a second, or 1.8 trillion tokens an hour. Now, this is not the only indication that Gemini is undergoing some serious growth right now. The latest edition of SimilarWeb's traffic report showed that Gemini was by far and away the big leader for AI platform growth in September. The Gemini web app saw a 46% jump in traffic, which was more than triple the increase for Perplexity, which was in second place with a little over a 14% jump. That report, by the way, also noted that DeepSeek notched its first month of growth since February, and also that traffic to the Grok web app was the only one that had dropped, falling by 7.4%. Now, similar web stats are a very light touch metric and not something that we should overly index on. This looks only at traffic to web apps, doesn't really reflect usage at all on mobile apps. And for something like Grok, it gets most of its use through the X platform. So we actually don't know what the overall usage of Grok looked like last month versus in August. But still, with all that said, what's undeniable from the report is that Gemini is growing at a tremendous rate. Between that and it overcoming ChatGPT in the App Store for a time before Sora kicked it all back up, the race between ChatGPT and Gemini keeps getting tighter and tighter. Plus, as the AI for Success account points out, I wonder what will happen when they release Gemini 3.0 Flash and Gemini 3.0 Pro in a few weeks. Next up today, if you thought the risk of Mark Zuckerberg poaching your big talent was over, think again. Meta has poached another very high-profile AI researcher to add to their superintelligence lab. The Wall Street Journal reports that no less than a founding member of Thinking Machines Labs, Andrew Tulloch, has left to join Meta, informing co-workers of his decision on Friday. Tulloch left OpenAI in 2024 to found TML with Mira Murati and several other departing OpenAI leaders. Prior to joining OpenAI in 2023, he had spent a decade at Meta as a machine learning engineer. Confirming his resignation on Saturday, a spokesperson for TML said, Andrew has decided to pursue a different path for personal reasons. And according to rumors, it sounds like it may have been well over a billion reasons. Back in August, the Wall Street Journal reported that Tulloch had turned down a six-year $1.5 billion offer from Meta. The story went viral, serving as the first solid reporting that Zuckerberg was personally recruiting AI researchers and offering 10-figure deals to top talent. Tulloch was in fact the poster boy for the billion-dollar talent war that captured the narrative over the summer. Now, at the time, Meta said that the description of a billion-dollar offer was inaccurate and ridiculous, adding that any compensation package was predicated on Meta's stock rising, which frankly is a little bit of a non-denial regarding the maximum size of the comp package. Overall, that article had been focused on an overall buyout offer to Thinking Machines Lab, which was turned down. The tone emphasized that none of the leading researchers at the startup had accepted Meta's offer. Reportedly, more than a dozen TML researchers were contacted by Zuckerberg over the summer. Now, there are a million different lines of speculation out there. The rumor that is flying around X is that this was a $3.5 billion offer. I don't know where that got started. I've seen no evidence to support it. The other, and to me more compelling, consideration that some are sharing is that this might reflect some amount of an assessment of the widening gap between the available resources in the sector. Despite being one of the most well-funded early-stage startups in the history of Silicon Valley, the resources available to TML in terms of compute and infrastructure are a tiny sliver of what is available to Meta. Ultimately, we don't know if that's the reason or personal compensation or something else entirely is the reason that these moves have happened. But as many people are pointing out, Llama 5 better deliver. Moving back over to Elon's world for a minute, XAI is joining the race to develop world models. The Financial Times reports that XAI hired a pair of researchers away from NVIDIA over the summer to work on the technology. NVIDIA, through its Omniverse platform, has been one of the leaders in practical world models used to train embodied AI in simulated environments. Google and Feifei Li's World Labs have also made significant progress, though their demos have been more focused on generating interactive video. 
Through Tesla's cars and robots, XAI could have an opportunity to pair world models with actual embodied AI. But that said, Elon Musk appears to be thinking about a different application as well. Posting last week, the XAI Game Studio will release a great AI-generated game before the end of the year. XAI is currently hiring technical staff for an Omni team, which, quote, creates magical AI experiences beyond text, enabling understanding and generation of content across various modalities, including image, video, and audio. Among the roles is a video game tutor who will teach Grok to produce video games. The goal, it says, is to allow users to explore AI-assisted game design. Some think this is a clever short-term play from Elon. Phil Truby writes, Classic Elon strategy. World models are proving to be needed for robots like Optimus, but Optimus' revenue is years away. However, world models can also be used sooner for AI-native video games. Thus, Elon is creating near-term revenue for this otherwise long-term technology. Now, one of the things always lurking behind people's minds is will there come a point where Elon decides that it makes sense to try to fold everything all together under, for example, the banner of Tesla? In that light, could this be a medium-term play to create a narrative that Tesla should buy out XAI? Remains to be seen, but regardless, it is super interesting that XAI is jumping into the world model space as well. Lastly today, escalation in the chip war as China cracks down on NVIDIA imports and the Dutch government seizes a Chinese chip maker. If you're paying attention to the broader market at all, you will not need me to tell you that trade war tensions hit a fever pitch this weekend in the lead up to talks between the Trump administration and Beijing. AI chips were just one front in the all-encompassing trade war. On Friday, the Financial Times broke news that Chinese authorities had begun a crackdown on firms importing NVIDIA chips. They wrote that customs officers have been mobilized at major ports, searching for H20 and RTX Pro 6000D chips that are designed to meet U.S. export controls. One source told the FT that Chinese authorities were also looking for more advanced chips that were smuggled into the country in breach of U.S. policy. In the West, we had heard that Beijing had discouraged, quote-unquote, firms from importing NVIDIA chips, but it seems that that was a little more than a suggestion. Alongside cargo searches, officials are also poring over documentation to see if firms made false declarations about importing NVIDIA chips in the past. In a strange twist, Beijing now appears to be far more concerned about stopping the flow of advanced AI chips than even the biggest China hawks in Washington. Then, breaking overnight on Sunday, the Dutch government has seized control of a Chinese-owned chipmaker. Nexperia is a Dutch subsidiary of WingTech Technology, which specializes in the production of high-volume, low-end chips for automotive and consumer electronics. On Sunday evening local time, the Dutch Minister of Economic Affairs revealed that the Goods Availability Act had been invoked in September to seize the company, the first time that that 1952 law had ever been used. He said that the move was made in order to, quote, prevent a situation in which the goods produced by Nexperia, finished and semi-finished products, would become unavailable in an emergency. A government statement said that the highly exceptional decision had been made after the ministry observed recent and acute signals of serious government shortcomings and actions. WingTech responded in a now-deleted WeChat post, The Dutch government's decision to freeze Nexperia's global operations under the pretext of national security constitutes excessive intervention driven by geopolitical bias rather than a fact-based risk assessment. Endgame Macro writes, What's happening with Nexperia goes way beyond a simple regulatory move by the Dutch government. This is a frontline moment in the global tech power struggle between the West and China. On paper, the Netherlands says it's stepping in because of administrative shortcomings and national security risks, but in reality, this is about cutting off one of China's quiet back doors into Western chip technology. Nexperia may be based in Europe, but it's owned by China's wing tech, and the fear is that valuable know-how could end up back in Chinese hands. Whatever the case, it is a major escalation and just shows how many dimensions to this crazy AI story there are right now. That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode.